All right, what's up guys? Pat Burke at MBS CrossFit. We are gonna talk about workout 16.1, and it's a doozy, okay? So it's AMRAP 20 of 25 foot overhead walking lunge, 95, 65. And then we got the scaled uh, division as well with some different um, weight and then um, different movements. But we got the overhead walking lunge, eight bar facing burpees, 25 foot overhead walking lunge, and then eight chest bar pull-ups. Um, so Emily's gonna demonstrate each one of these movements real quick. So the overhead walking lunge, we're gonna have a bar loaded like so. She's gonna power clean it up, put it overhead. We are gonna have the ground marked out, so a distance that she needs to cover for the 25 foot, and there's gonna be five foot increments. Um, so she's just gonna go ahead and lunge. That knee needs to kiss the ground on each and every one. Um, and when she, and then also her hips need to open at the top here. So right there, let's say the line was right there, she completes, her hips need to finish, uh, feet back together, she can bring the bar down. So we got the overhead walking lunge, then we have the bar facing burpees. So she's gonna do a burpee in front of the bar, chest touches the ground, and then a two foot jump. So she can jump uh, to the bar, or she can even step. So chest needs, needs to touch the ground, she can step, and then a two foot jump to a two foot landing there. Um, and that's what we need to see, eight of those. So no matter where she ends up on the bar, um, she needs to come back the same direction. She's just not gonna keep on going that way, so turn it around, um, no more burpees. Uh -huh. So it'd be overhead walk and lunge back. That's good. And the other movement is the chest bar pull up. Face this way. So we're clearly seeing the chest to the bar, touch the bar on every rep. So it needs to be below the clavicle. So that right there is the workout that we're going to be taking on. And uh, so I'm gonna break, I broke the workout into some, some different categories. So the first thing is the rep schemes and strategy that we can um, take on. So basically this is a 20 minute workout and I really think most of this is about cardio. So that's kind of how I broke it down. So we have horrible cardio, so-so, uh, just kind of middle ground, and then cardio king. And so we have each one of these movements. So for number one, horrible cardio, and actually for all three of these, I think it's going to be in everybody's best interest, no matter what your strength is, to always uh, assume that you're going to do the 25 foot overhead walking lunge unbroken. So for all three, no matter, whenever that bar goes up and overhead, you're always going to complete, unless you get cut off by the time. But that will always be assumed that it's gone 25 feet, okay? So that's it on that movement. For the bar facing burpees, somebody that has horrible cardio, okay? Um, what I would suggest is that they are gonna pace it and see it just as singles. So every time that they do a burpee and then jump over the bar, so an example, I just jumped over the bar, is that I would have a super slow turnaround, okay? And that's gonna be a pace that's held throughout. So if I jump over the bar and step there, I'm gonna kinda count my steps and then come back towards the bar for my next rep. And that'll just continuously, forever, that'll be your pattern. So no stopping. So nobody, I don't want anybody to stop on bar facing burpees. So overhead walking lunge and bar facing burpees for everybody will be um, unbroken. For somebody that has so-so cardio, I, could, I would suggest that they, they see the eight bar facing burpees in two sets of four which are done at a little bit of a faster pace. So the, the guy with bad cardio is gonna take this long kind of loop around, but he's gonna hold that pace. But somebody who's got medium cardio, they're gonna jump over and immediately turn right around and do the next one. But then after four, maybe they can take that big step and then step back into it, or big turn and then get back into it. So see it as two sets of four. Um, Maybe towards the end, it's four sets of two or something, but that's gonna be better right there. Somebody with really great cardio, I'm just assuming since there's no heavy weight in, in any of this, 
and like the most challenging movement would be the chest to bar but if you are a cardio king you're just ripping through everything you're gonna rip through all eight bar facing burpees basically as fast as you can go uh, comfortably so the last movement the chest to bar somebody with horrible cardio <laughs> keep on <laughs> poor guy <laughs> horrible cardio um, I, I would really suggest some kind of uh, strategy of just doing singles um, and just keeping your heart rate down, staying in control as much as you can. So a single chest to bar pull up. Do you want to show me a couple singles? Face this way. So just do one single and then you're back off. Okay, reset, do another single. Yep, shake it out. So that's what that would look like is somebody doing um, holding the pace of just doing singles. And I've seen this done before where it actually works really good. I've seen it done with as many as 50 pull-ups where they just did 50 singles. And as long as you hold to it, um, it works really good, even better than somebody doing 10, you know, and just really gassing themselves and bending over and just ripping their hands and all the numerous things that can happen. So. Um, for somebody with that, you know, not as great in the cardio, one, rest, shake it out. Feel in control of your heart rate, do another one. Just don't blow up. Um, somebody with so-so, I would suggest a similar thing, four sets of two, um, or maybe the first set's always four and then two and two, something like that, where you're remaining in control. The cardio king, maybe it's just smart for that person to do four plus four, two sets of four or rip through all eight. If you know that this isn't gonna blow you up too bad, or if you'll just, um, you'll remain in, in charge of your heart rate, because we're gonna go back to that overhead walking lunge. So if it just doesn't blow you up, rip through all eight if you can get them, okay? So that's kind of the rep scheme strategy. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, we, we always have a plan, but um, it's good to kind of see all the different situations and. And if you start out like this guy and end up being this guy, then maybe towards the end end up that, it's not so bad. Basically, the point is, is plans can get tossed out the window sometimes, but it's just good to have a plan so that you can start there and then have like a little bit of a backup plan, um, so on and so forth. All right, so that's the rep scheme strategy. Basically, just, just dig in and stay in the suck for a while. Equipment, um, shoes. Nanos, regular shoes, no ollie shoes. Joint support. Since we are going to be placing our knee on the ground a lot of times, I suggest knee sleeves if you have them. Wrist wraps wouldn't be a bad idea to support the wrist for all those burpees and then also holding the bar overhead. Um, I don't think a belt would be uh, would provide a whole lot of support, but if you could try it in your warm up, and if it just doesn't offer support, then ditch it. Taping only if the pull-ups are going to rip you up. It's a pretty small number of number of pull-ups that you'll end up doing. So I wouldn't suggest it unless you think that those um, those pull-ups are going to rip you up. And what I'm referring to is like taping your hands and the gymnastics tape. Um, chalk, obviously, I think having it next to pull-up bar because your hands probably get all sweaty and stuff. So keep your hands chalked. So that's it for that. Nutrition. So this is, this is a long one, obviously. Um, so the day of, basically everything uh, night before and, and all the way up until like an hour and a half, two hours, somewhere in that range. Um, eat plenty, eat as you normally would. Um, don't starve yourself. Um, eat good sized meals, drink plenty of water. Um, electrolytes, like if you have uh, Pedialyte or whatever we sell stuff here for electrolytes. If you have that, just make sure that you're fully stocked on everything. Um, that final hour, if you if you haven't eaten in a couple hours, um, a small snack. Sometimes what I do, if I just know that I need a little something, if the meal that I previously had isn't going to sustain me, especially for a long workout, I might have a protein shake, even if it's just a half serving. So I'll mix a full thing and then just drink half of it, and I know. That'll, that'll do me right and not um, upset my stomach during the workout. After, um, so I, in a big workout like this with intensity just strung out for a long time, um, you're gonna want a lot of carbs. Uh, I really try to get as many up to a half of my daily intake of carbs post-workout. 
along with 20 to 30 grams of protein. So that's just gonna help out. I mean, this workout 20 minutes long is gonna really beat your body up and it's gonna really want a lot of nutrition after. So that's what you have within 30 minutes of the workout. Um, so an example would be most protein shakes have about 20 to 30, 30 grams of protein. I wrote just a banana, but that would likely not be enough. Um, carbohydrates, probably like two bananas or something, or a sweet potato, a banana and a sweet potato. Um, that would be ideal. Um, and then we want to eat a meal after within, you know, within an hour to two hours, we want to continue giving ourselves carbs and protein. So that's kind of the nutrition breakdown. Yeah, definitely. You're going to sweat a lot, drink, keep on drinking water. So coming over here to stretching the day of up to about an hour before of stretching. We don't want to just keep on stretching all the way up to the workout. Um, about an hour before, kind of peel off the stretching. Lats uh, for this bar overhead position, pecs, glutes, and hips. So Emily's going to show us a couple over here. So for the lats, I have just a bar hang. So the focus right here is on the lats, and so she's just going to hang here for sets of anywhere from 10, 15 to 20 seconds. Not so much that you're wearing, blasting your grip out, but just getting a good stretch, trying to push your head through and just open up the shoulders. That's one way if you have a pull-up bar. Another one, if you just got floor, is a child's pose. This is the one where you're going to stick your hands out in front. This is actually good for the hips and the low back too. She's raising her hands up on her fingers so that she can push her chest down a little bit further. So just stretching the lats out. There's also other things you can do, you know, hanging from a bar to the side. Um, so lats is one. Um, chest, so again, we're gonna be up overhead. The two big things to, to be concerned about when you have overhead position is lats and pecs. Um, so just a door jam stretch. So standing in a door and then just stretching out her chest there. Um, that one's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and then the last one is glutes and hips. So just any of the dozens of stretches that you can do here, we got a lunge. So just getting down in the lunge, um, and you can twist this, turn this any way. She can kind of face, take her belly button, face that way, take her belly button, face the other way. She can attempt to, uh, get her elbow down to the ground. Wow. She does it. Um, so that's a great stretch there um, on both sides and then also pigeon stretch kind of hits the, the glutes all this yucky madness so you can work on going down you can also kind of turn your body this way turn your body that way um, anything just to open this any of this stuff up um, for those lunges uh, so that your muscles are ready to go for that and Okay, finally, we have a couple warm-up moves. So I have um, three moves. So bar kips, we're going to be doing chest-to-bar pull-ups. We want our, our shoulders nice and greased, and we also want the movement pattern of the kip warmed up. So either you're doing a, the glide kip, or not glide kip, gymnastics kip, or butterfly. You probably start with just a gymnastics kip to open up the shoulders. So I usually say eight to ten reps right here. And work, she's concerned about being smooth, engagement of the core, and then also just her shoulders getting opened up. So that's movement number one. Um, movement number two, I can't, so far away here, is, oh, loaded squat. So if you can, if you can get here early and do some squats. Um, so we're gonna be doing lunges. And so what I would do is, um, either back squat, maybe front squat, probably not overhead squat because I'm going to be doing so much of that in the workout, but like back squat would probably be my favorite one. It's just warm the legs up, get them really primed. So like four sets of four and at just a, a, a low, you know, enough to feel it, but um, not so much to, to wear you out, like 60 to 70% max for uh, four sets of four, working up to four sets. Uh, Working up to four reps at 60 to 70 percent, okay? Um, obviously not like going to a one rep max, that would be ridiculous. Uh, and then the last one, oh, is just for all the jumping in the burpees, a lot of foot movement, um, kind of plyometric. 
is um, either skip and rope or like a 200 meter jog. So we have, I would, I would do four rounds, three to four rounds, just an easy pace of bar kips, progress, butter, pro progress to butterflies if you are gonna do butterfly. Um, so you got kips, you have a loaded squat, and then either jump rope or a little jog, a little, it could be a shuttle run too. Um, do like four rounds of that and just practice keeping your heart rate down. Just practice keeping your heart rate down. Um, and then just visualizing how you're warming up for the movements in the workout. All right, last piece here, final thoughts. Um, this is just my opinion, take it for, for what you want here. Um, a big focus is for 20 minutes, just keeping your heart rate down, relax, you know, listen to the music, um, try to find a beat, different songs that have different beats, just try to find that and put your mind elsewhere. Um, no pre wad I wouldn't suggest pre wad on this. This is, you're going to be like sucking on your tongue and it's going to be horrible. Um, I, 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 I've had bad experiences with that. So it's such a long workout. <clears throat> I don't think that that would be a great thing. Um, and really overall, just steady, hold steady one foot in front of the other. You can always take one more step, one more step, one more burpee, one more chest to bar. It's just, and just keep on doing that until 20 minutes and then lay out on the floor and your judge will tell you your score and you will be really proud of yourself. All right, guys, that's it. Um, let's get after it.